Here's what we know about teaching right now. We have no idea who is going to be a good teacher before they get into the classroom. For many years, we used to choose people for teaching by having them interviewed by the university staff. More recently, we've involved teachers in that. Very few people ask children. The most important question, I think, for every teacher is, do you like young people? Because if you don't, the next 40 years are going to be a bit of a drag for you. <laughs> we can't tell good teaching when we see it. As I said earlier, the, the chance factors are too significant. We also can't tell good teaching by looking at value-added scores. Recent research on teacher value-added shows that good teachers contribute to students' learning for at least three years after they stop teaching the children. Good teachers make the teachers who teach their kids in future years look better because they lay such sound platforms for future learning. So you can't even look at teachers' skill by looking at value-added scores because at the end of the year, much of the value has yet to be added. Those are long-term investments. Government obsession with things like Teach First and things like getting the best and brightest into teaching for a couple of years is actually misguided. It's unlikely to succeed because expertise takes at least 10 years to develop. Right now, teachers slow, and most teachers actually stop improving after two or three years. Why is this? Because the environment is so challenging when you start teaching. The environment is so difficult that you are forced to improve. So basically, you are getting better and better because the environment is making you improve. But after you get basic control of your classroom, after you get those management team routines sorted out, then you start coasting a little bit. And so what, that's what the research shows. The environment makes you improve in the first couple of years because teaching is, is, is basically so challenging. But when you get the mastery of those routines, many teachers stop. And that means that we are only beginning to scratch the surface of what we are capable of. If teachers embrace this idea that expertise is the result of 10 years of deliberate practice, of deliberate efforts to improve practice, we can have every teacher in the profession being an expert because talent is overrated. What we need to do is to, is, is to forget getting the best and the brightest into the profession. What we need is those with a real passion for working with young people. If you are going to do this as a dilettante, then you're never going to spend the time to get really good at this. But if you really care about helping young people learn, you don't, you don't want to be a teacher because you love maths. You want to be a teacher because you love young people. And you want to be, have maths being the vehicle by which you actually work with young people. That is the good reason to be a teacher. And that's what we want, is people who are so passionate about teaching that they will stay there for the long haul. They will spend at least the 10 years that they need to actually acquire the expertise to be an absolutely outstanding teacher. If we pursue this strategy, we can have teachers that are better than every other country in the world, because every other country in the world is being seduced by this idea of getting smart people into teaching. If we actually create a culture where every teacher needs, believes they need to improve, not because they're not good enough, but because they can be even better, there is no limit to what we can achieve if we support our teachers in the right way.